It's the flu season and think about it, how many of us actually deal with it in the same way every year, every season? You get a slight sore throat, a fever, body ache, we don't wait, we don't test, we don't even ask questions, we casually just start popping medicines and not just any medicines, we start popping antibiotics. Azithromycin, amoxicline, and all of these are household names now. In India, these antibiotics, very powerful antibiotics, are swallowed as if they are everyday flu pills, shared by family, suggested by neighbors, sometimes handed out over the counter, even without prescription, sometimes recommended by your local chemist as well. And now, that habit is coming back to bite us. Because the reality is this, flu is viral. Antibiotics don't treat viruses, as the name suggests. But the very unnecessary antibiotic dose trains bacteria to fight back. And over time, those bacteria win. That's antimicrobial resistance, AMR. A problem India is already quite deep into. Doctors say common infections are no longer responding to first-line antibiotics. UTIs, pneumonias, post-surgical infections, treatments are getting longer, costlier, riskier. It's in this context, the warning came from the Prime Minister himself, Narendra Modi, during his Man Ki Baat address recently. He flagged that AMR resistance, AMR actually, as a serious and growing public health threat, citing findings from the ICMR, the Indian Council of Medical Research, that shows antibiotics in India are steadily losing their effectiveness, largely because of misuse and overuse. He urged people to stop taking antibiotics without medical advice and to complete sort of prescribed courses instead of stopping midway. Doctors across the country backed that message and added an important public service as well. How do you even know but, and that's the question I often get, how do we even know that the medicine you have is an antibiotic? Well, that picture on your screen is a tell. Look for a red vertical line that means that it's a prescription-only drug. Check if it says Schedule H or H1. These are antibiotics that sort of legally require a doctor's prescription. And if the medicine name ends with the Killin, C-I-L-I-N, or Mycin, or a Floxin, pause, chances are that it's an antibiotic. Doctors say, that if you're unsure, always ask them because taking the wrong drug is no longer harmless. It can actually do more harm to you. And finally, the bigger picture. Indian healthcare has real strength, right? Medical uh, you know, treatments here are affordable, access is widespread. Treatment is within reach for millions, but the same affordability and availability also creates this challenge of abuse and misuse. And when it comes to antibiotics, remember, misuse today, means no cure tomorrow. So we hope that is something that you will keep in mind next time you pop a pill. But to tell us more about that, I'm joined by one of the most sound voices on healthcare and medicine in the country. Very delighted to have Dr. Devi Shetty with us. He's a chairman and senior consultant cardiac surgeon at Narayan Healthcare. Thank you so much, Dr. Shetty, for your time. I have to start Thank by you. saying this. We are doing our bit. Now the Prime Minister has also stepped in. Doctors have been saying this for a while now. But how deep really is antibiotic resistance in the country? How often are you seeing it in your patients? It is very, very, very common. I, I have been doing cardiac surgery in India for more than 36 years. Mm -hmm. First 15 years, infection was never a problem. We used to give antibiotic just for a day after a major heart operation and nothing later. And any time when the condition of the patient deteriorated, we never thought it is due to infection or sepsis. Today, unfortunately, when any patient following any treatment deteriorates in the hospital, first diagnosis is sepsis or infection. It is a serious yeah. problem because most of the antibiotics have become useless for even common infections. It is a very serious situation and people should take charge and must start acting now. Otherwise, we will land in trouble. Right. But, you know, Dr. Shetty, you know this better than I do, that India's 
you know, affordable, available healthcare is now being counterproductive. The fact that we don't reach out to a doctor, we just go to our local chemist, and often they are the ones who are prescribing. I'll give you an example. Uh, my mother was visiting in town, and I called up the chemist to say that I need something for, you know, cough. I just wanted some cough sills, maybe just for a throat. And the chemist, on the other hand, is saying, why don't you give uh, azithromycin, because that's just yes. going to cure it. Yes, yes. It is very sad that we have reached that level, but at least now there is an awareness, and uh, I hope all these antibiotics are prescribed only on doctor's prescription, and it's not difficult to monitor. The, today, no pharmacist is expected to prescribe, give any medicine without the doctor's mm -hmm. prescription, and mm -hmm. more than a regulation, it is the people who should be aware about the mm. harmful effect of antibiotics, yes. Yes. Dr. Shetty, another way in which antibiotics get into our system uh, is through poultry. We recently had a massive egg issue in the country. I don't think people understand that antibiotics which are administered on cows from where we get our milk, paneer, cheese, and the rest of it, all our dairy products, or chickens and hens where we get our eggs, and again, poultry from, or non-veg, etc. That also harms our system in a, in a way that we can't help, in a way where citizen awareness can't help either. Could you explain to our viewers simply how it actually enters the system and why it matters? The, 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 the poultry business, if the, the chickens are given antibiotics, their weight will increase dramatically, giving more return on investment for the poultry farmers. So antibiotic consumption in poultry uh, and animal husbandry is significantly higher than its utilization in the uh, pa real patient care. This is a big problem. It used to be the problem in Europe and most of the developed countries. Now they have really, really clamped down on all these uh, uh, utilization of antibiotic in uh, poultry farming. So it's a time for our government also start monitoring the utilization of this very, very dangerous antibiotic in farming. It's very easy. You have to just check the meat and look at the antibiotic content, and that will give you a very clear picture. But that's the challenge, no, Dr. Shetty. In India, our food norms are so weak, filtration and adulteration is so, uh, you know, so high that we barely get to understand. Even an egg is adulterated, even the chicken that you eat is adulterated, even the milk that you consume or milk products that you have, you know, don't have quality checks. That's a huge issue which requires policy changes. In your experience, what is it that the governments can do at this point? Because this is a complicated problem. Yes. See, the... Every country went through this phase. Hmm. And now it has reached a level we have no choice. And I'm sure our government will act on it. All we have to do is to take some random samples of meat or chicken or whatever is available and check for the antibiotic. And if you now, fortunately, these uh, farm and the, 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 the poultry, the, the products are getting more and more organized. And as it gets organized, it gets easier and easier for policymakers also to monitor these things. So hmm. time is to, uh, you know, this is the time to act and we can't delay it anymore because hmm. the, okay, doctors may not prescribe antibiotic, patient may not take it, but if our uh, fish and the chicken and what we eat, if it is uh, virtually, you know, filled with antibiotic, the whole exercise is futile. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Shetty, in the interest of our viewers, could you explain to say my five-year-old niece and also my 50-year-old grandmom, what happens when you abuse antibiotics? When you either stop taking it midway, don't complete the course, or you take it too often? Sure. Uh, supposing uh, your auntie or somebody develops cold and cough, it is essentially a viral infection. Taking antibiotic will not make any difference in the recovery. But there are a lot of bacteria in our own body, which is just living there. And once you give the antibiotic, bacteria will taste it. After a while, the bacteria will become resistant to the antibiotic. Okay. Mm. 
Now this happens after cold and cough, repeated antibiotic ingestion. A year later, you develop a urinary tract infection with the same bacteria. And doctors, as usual, give the first line of antibiotic and that doesn't work. Then they try the second level, uh, level of antibiotic. That may not even work. Hmm. Then you have a serious problem in hand. The fear is that as you have consumed more antibiotic, you can take it for granted that your, bac your bacterial infection, whether in the urinary tract or a lung or following surgery, will not respond to the standard antibiotic. You have to go to the higher antibiotic. Higher antibiotics have more side effects and they are, more, they are supposed to be more powerful. Even they may not work. There are times you would have tried all the antibiotics, various combinations of antibiotics, and the infection just doesn't get controlled. And we see this happening more and more often. And if this happens following a major surgery, there is a disaster waiting. Yes. It is indeed. Uh, and Dr. Shetty, I have to ask you, uh, also the concept of superbugs. Uh, we keep, we, like I said, we know about it pretty well. But if you had to explain it to our audiences to get this concept of superbugs, how they develop and why India is now having to make even more powerful antibiotics with, like any medicine, even more powerful side effects, that will have to come into picture if this problem is not sorted. See, the first thing is, about making antibiotic. In the last few years, there hasn't been a single, virtually single, no single new antibiotic which has been introduced to the treatment. It mm. takes billions of dollars to produce an antibiotic. That is the first thing I, it is not like you give one antibiotic, it doesn't get, work, you give the second antibiotic. There are only limited number of antibiotics for the last maybe 10 years. No new antibiotic has been added. And worst thing is there aren't that many new antibiotics in the pipeline to reassure ourselves, okay, we go through this problem, but soon there will be new antibiotic coming. Nothing mm. is coming because mm. it is very, very expensive to uh, develop this and the pipeline has virtually exhausted. That is the first mm. thing. The mm. superbug is a, a, a bacteria which is resistant to virtually every known antibiotic. And these are becoming rampant. And God forbid if you get infection with those superbugs, very, very, very hard to control it. Got it. Uh, Dr. Shetty, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for explaining this to us. We really hope voices like yours, that of the Prime Minister as well, are able to get through. But like we discussed, it's not just about changing habits. We need systemic changes as well. We need policy changes and better vigilance on ground, especially when it comes to poultry, etc., for us to actually, you know, get some of that immunity back and avoid further abuse. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.